Hello and welcome to the session on Fundamentals of Program Learning. If we look at the history of educational instruction, we can see that the method of mass instruction has been traditionally used in schools. In this method, the content, the instructional technology and learning materials are same for all students in a classroom. Moreover, all students are expected to keep the same pace of learning. As we know, a class is comprised of individual students who differ from one another in cognitive capacities, skills perceptions, academic performance and learning experiences. The pace of learning also varies from one student to another. Mass instruction method does not take into consideration such differences and unique requirements of individual students. In order to rectify this problem, a new method of instruction was introduced. This new method is called individualized instruction which takes into account the learning abilities and interest of individual learners. As the name suggests, individualized instruction places emphasis on the learning experiences of individual students, not on class as a whole. The primary goal of this method of instruction is to make learning self-directed and self-initiated. We have seen that educational technology plays an important role in individualizing instruction. In the past few decades, several new techniques have been introduced with the aim of making individualized instruction more effective. In this unit, we will learn more about one of those techniques used in individualized instruction, namely program learning. What is program learning? Program learning also known as programmed instruction is one of the most effective innovations introduced to the teaching learning process. It is a highly individualized and systematic strategy of instruction. It is useful not just in classroom instruction, but also in self-learning and auto-instruction. To put simply, programmed learning is the instruction provided by means of programmed learning materials. The program used in this method is designed and sequenced anticipating the responses of students in the teaching learning process. Thus, the entire range of learning experience is pre-designed based on a set of predetermined instructional goals and objectives. Let us consider an example to understand the concept of program learning better. Many Indian universities are providing correspondence courses on a wide range of subjects. The students enrolled in these courses do not or rarely interact with regular tutors or instructors. Instruction on the other hand is provided to these students through carefully designed learning material which helps them in the process of self-instruction. It is important here to note that the scope of program learning is not limited to self-instruction courses. It is widely used in regular class settings as well. Program learning applies the principles of psychology and technology to provide individualized instruction to students and improve the effectiveness and quality of learning process. Key terms used in the program learning. Before we examine this method of instruction in detail, it is important to clarify some of the terms we constantly use in relation to program learning. Program. The term program refers to the subject matter to be learned by the students. It is an instructional sequence comprised of several small units of information. A program is designed based on instructional objectives and the aim of a program is to help students achieve these objectives through teaching learning process. Frames. As already mentioned, a program contains several units of information. In other words, learning material is presented to students in the form of small units which are sequentially arranged. These small units are called frames. It should be noted here that these frames are graded based on their level of difficulty and presented to students stage by stage. Sequence The term sequence refers to the order in which frames are arranged in a program and presented to students during the process of instruction. Programming 
In the context of program learning, the term programming refers to the process of arranging the subject matter to facilitate effective learning. Programmer, the teacher or instructor who develops the program which are to be used in programmed instruction is called a programmer. It is important to note that a programmer should be subject matter expert with adequate knowledge in technology and psychology. He or she should be familiar with the technique of programming too. Definitions, characteristics and principles of program learning. Many scholars trace the origin of program learning to the great Greek philosopher Socrates who is believed to have developed a program in geometry. However, this instructional method as we understand in today was developed in the 20th century by a number of American psychologists including Edward Thorndike, Sidney L. Pressey, B. F. Skinner, G. Holland and Norman A. Crowder. Of these, the names of Skinner and Crowder deserve a special mention since they are considered as developers of linear programming and branched programming respectively. Definitions of program learning. Different scholars have defined program learning in different ways. These definitions throw light on the chief characteristics of this method. Let us go through some of the most popular definitions of program learning. Susan Markle defined program learning as the method of designing a reproducible sequence of instructional events to produce a measurable and consistent effect on the behavior of each and every acceptable student. According to Harold D. Bernard, programmed learning refers to the arrangement of instructional material in progressive sequences. Wendell I. Smith and J. William Moore defined programmed instruction as the process of arranging the material to be learned into a series of sequential steps. They further identified how programmed learning functions. According to them, it usually moves students from a familiar background into a complex and new set of concepts, principles and understanding. Main characteristics of program learning. Program learning has a set of defining characteristics that differentiate it from other methods of instruction. Here are some of the most important characteristics of this method. To begin with, it is a method of introduced instruction where learning material and information are presented to students to suit their individual needs. This helps to maximize the rate and depth of learning, fosters understanding and motivates students. Another important characteristic of this method is self pacing. This means that students learn and move forward at their own speed and pace. It acknowledges the fact that there are differences in the rate at which individuals learn. The subject matter is broken into smaller units and presented to students in a sequential order. By presenting the material through small units and in a progressive manner, the level of complexity is increased gradually from lower to the higher levels. It also ensures smoothness of transition from one item to another and eliminates the possibility of errors. In this method, interaction happens between students and the program. Needless to say, it requires students to remain active throughout the process of instruction. Program learning ensures continuous responses from students. In this method, it is possible to immediately confirm whether the responses and answers given to students are correct or not. It also gives students a chance to correct their wrong responses before they move on to the next stage of learning. In other words, at each step, students know how they are doing and can assess their own performance. Another important characteristic of this method is the organized nature of the knowledge. Concepts and information are organized in a progressive manner starting from the least complex to the most complex. This ensures continuity between easier and difficult concepts. It also ensures that students have mastered the basic 
and easier concepts before more complex and difficult ones are presented to them. The instructional sequence of program learning take into account the initial behavior of students. The program is designed keeping in mind the terminal competency students are expected to achieve at the end of the instructional process. Program learning ensures constant evaluation by recording the responses of students at each step. The performance and the progress made by students can be evaluated by checking the nature of the responses. The students responses can also be used to improve the overall quality of the program. Program learning offers individualized instruction by means of a variety of sources such as program textbooks, teaching machines or computers. Instruction can be provided with or without the aid of teachers. Principles of program learning. A good program learning strategy is designed according to a set of fundamental principles. They are the principle of smaller steps. We have already seen that in program learning, the learning material is presented to students in smaller units which are arranged in a progressive sequence. The rationale behind this assumption is that students can learn better if the contents of a subject matter is presented to them in proper small steps. The principle of active response. Another underlying principle of this method is that students can learn better when they remain active in the process of instruction. This means that students should respond actively to every frame presented to them. When designing programmed material, proper care should be taken to involve students in each and every step of the learning process. The principle of immediate reinforcement. The third guiding principle of program learning is the psychological phenomena of reinforcement. This is based on the assumption that students learn better and feel motivated when they receive immediate feedback about the responses. Thus, a good program should make provisions to give immediate and constant reinforcement to students. The principle of self-pacing. As already mentioned, program learning is a method of individualized instruction. Therefore, an important principle of this method is self-pacing. That is, students learn better when they are allowed to learn at their own pace. A good program should be designed taking into account the individual differences of students. The frames should be presented in such a way that students are able to respond and move from one frame to another at their own speed and pace. The principle of continuous evaluation. Continuous evaluation helps to improve the quality of teaching as well as learning. In program learning, adequate care should be given to obtain and record student responses at every stage. This not only helps the evaluate the progress and made by students, but also to assess the overall effectiveness of the program. Program development. Development of program is a highly dynamic, extremely challenging and time consuming task. Typically, it involves three stages, namely the preparation stage, construction or writing stage and evaluation stage. Each stage consists of a series of steps and activities which a programmer has to carry out. Let us examine these stages and steps in some detail. 1. Preparation stage. Preparation is the first stage of program development. It is usually done in different steps starting from the selection of a unit to the preparation of the content outline. Selecting a unit. As the first step of preparation, the programmer should choose a unit that is to be programmed. It is desirable that the programmer chooses a unit from his or her field of study. An important criterion for choosing the unit is the ease of handling learning material. The length of the unit should be determined based on the predefined instructional objectives. It is also important to choose short units instead of choosing the entire course content. 
special care should be taken to choose units which are usually considered as a stumbling block to students. Another important criterion is to the logical order of the material. Special needs of students should also be given adequate consideration. Writing assumptions about students. The nature and content of the program differ for different target groups. Hence, it is important to list out the characteristics of the group for whom the program is being developed. That is to say, the programmer should clearly, objectively and accurately write down all assumptions about the target group. This includes their age, skills, interest, background, etc. Teachers can refer to the cumulative records, case history, records of achievement test, aptitude test and their personal experience to gather a clear picture of the target group. Determining instructional objectives. The instructional objectives should be determined prior to the development of the program. Moreover, these objectives should be stated in behavioral terms. Decisions regarding subject matter, instructional methods and learning material depend upon the instructional objectives. Defining prerequisite skills and knowledge. Any learning program is developed based on the assumption that the target group already possesses certain skills and knowledge. These prerequisite skills and knowledge should be stated in behavioral terms. This will help the programmer to demarcate the initial behavior with which students enter the learning process and the terminal behavior which they are expected to occur. Preparing a criterion test. The next step in the preparation stage involves the construction of a criterion test. The purpose of this test is to show the range of the terminal behavior which is to be developed through the program. Developing content outline. This is the last step in the preparation stage. The programmer should write a clear and specific outline of the content that is to be programmed. Along with the outline, the order in which the learning material is to be presented should also be decided. 2. Construction or writing stage. This stage involves the construction and actual writing of the program. Here programmers use the information they have gathered during the preparatory stage. A program can be written in different styles such as linear style or branched style. In the construction stage, the programmer takes decisions regarding which style is to be used. It is important to note that writing a programmed learning material differs from writing a textbook. The material should be prepared in line with the principles of programmed learning. The material is to be broken into small frames which are logically sequenced. Special care should be taken to keep the students meaningfully active by inviting responses at each stage. The frames should be designed in such a way that students get immediate feedback and reinforcement as they proceed from one frame to another. The task of writing the program is typically carried out in three steps, namely designing the frames, sequencing the frames and editing the program. The first step involves the designing of frames. Here the programmer should use special techniques like priming and prompting to help students respond correctly to the questions and proceed successfully from one frame to another. The second step involves proper sequencing of the frames. Here the programmer has to arrange the frames systematically in a logical order. Proper sequencing of frames leads students from their entry behavior to the terminal behavior. The frames are sequenced and ordered using logical and psychological principles. The third step of program writing is editing. Once the first draft of the program is written, the programmer should subject the draft to thorough review and editing to eliminate all possible errors. Technical inaccuracies 
language inaccuracies and program inaccuracies should be removed completely before the final program is presented to students. 3. Evaluation stage. This is the third and final stage of the program development. In this stage, the programmer attempts to test the efficiency and effectiveness of the program he or she has developed. Evaluation is done in the light of the results obtained from testing. Moreover, modifications and revisions are also made to improve the quality of the program. Before the program is actually presented to the target group, the programmer may choose to conduct tryout testing on a sample of individual students or small group of students. Module 4 Traditional Instructions versus Programmed Learning Programmed learning is different from the traditional method of classroom instruction in many aspects. We have briefly touched upon some of those differences in the last three units. We can summarize the major differences between these two methods as follows. The traditional method involves mass instruction while program learning involves individualized instruction. In the traditional method, the subject matter is presented to students as whole, but program learning presents the subject matter in small frames and step by step. In the traditional method, Students do not get immediate feedback and reinforcement, but program learning offers immediate feedback and reinforcement to students. In the traditional method, the instructional objectives might not be well defined or they are defined vaguely. Program learning on the other hand states the objectives clearly in operational and behavioral terms. Programmed learning differs from the traditional method in the degree of preparation and precision, while the traditional method involves lesser degrees of preparation on the part of the instructor, programmers prepare learning materials with precision and care. In the traditional method, the role of students is minimal and limited to that of passive listeners. They remain passive during the instructional process while instructors do the summarizing and reviewing themselves. In program learning, students play an active role as the frames are designed in such a way that students naturally participate in the process by making constant responses. The unit of information presented to students is relatively lengthy in the traditional method, while program learning uses smaller units of information. In program learning, it is easy to modify the frames and sequences of frames on the basis of student reactions. Effective sequences of frames are retained and ineffective sequences of frames are discarded or modified through a series of tryouts and testing. However, such a gradual modification and revision is very difficult to implement in the traditional method. Advantages and limitations of program learning. Advantages. The greatest advantage of program learning is that it individualizes the process of instruction giving students a chance to learn material at their own pace and speed. This method of instruction is an excellent solution to the problem of individual differences which traditional method often fail to address. This method helps to keep students active and alert throughout the process of instruction. Better quality of learning experience is ensured through making students active participants in the process of instruction. The structure and design of the frames used in program learning make it possible to teach complex subject matters in an easy and systematic manner. Moreover, Teachers can use this method to supplement the study of regular textbooks. Also, immediate feedback and reinforcement promotes effective learning. The program designed in this method can be used in self-instructional devices such as computer, teaching machine, program text, etc. These devices not only promote self-instruction but also solve the problem of the shortage of qualified instructors. Program learning is useful in the enrichment of curriculum 
and can be used to provide guidance and remedial instruction to students. Limitations Despite all the above mentioned advantages, program learning has some serious limitations. Though this method individualizes instruction, it is not as interactive as a classroom discussion or computer assisted instruction. Students cannot alter the scope or sequence of learning which are predefined by the programmer. Thus, this method limits students freedom of choice. Some styles of programmed instruction for example, linear programming might make the learning process dull and monotonous. Program learning especially branched programming can be expensive to develop. Most importantly, program development is an extremely time consuming task. Also, this method of instruction is based on the view that knowledge is comprised of the aggregates or discrete elements. Consequently, the integration of an entire body of knowledge may sometimes become difficult. Some experts are of the opinion that the use of small sequential frames fails to create interest and challenge talented students in the group. Now, you can try to answer the following questions. 1. What is the difference between mass instruction and individualized instruction? 2. What do the term program and frame refer to in program learning? 3. What are the things to consider when selecting a unit? 4. Which are the three steps in the construction stage of program development? 5. What are the major limitations of program learning? Now, you may go through the reference books given here. Principles of Education by Chandra S. S. and Sharma R. K. in 1996, Atlantic Publishers, New Delhi. Sociology of Education by Chandra S. S. and Sharma R. K. in 1996, Atlantic Publishers, New Delhi. Methods and Techniques of Teaching by Kochar S. K. 1977, Sterling Publishers, New Delhi. Teaching of Social Studies by Mangal S. K. and Mangal U. in 2008. PHI Learning, New Delhi. Teacher Education by Mohan R. 2011, PHI Learning, New Delhi. Changing Attitudes to Education in India by Reddy K. V. 2002, Atlantic Publishers, New Delhi. Advanced Educational Technology by Sharma Aran and Chandra S. S. 2003, Atlantic Publishers, New Delhi. Thank you for watching this program. We can meet again with another topic. Have a nice day.